Welcome to Digital Asset News, taking top stories in crypto and bringing them out of bite-sized pieces. So today, just like the thumbnail suggests, we're going to talk about three things that have led to a semi-crypto market recovery. And one of those things that we're going to start off with is what everybody on YouTube is talking about is the uh, debate or the discussion between the car salesman, Elon Musk, and Jack Dorsey from Twitter and Kathy Wood from ARK Investment. And we did a live stream and I'm going to sum it all up in about 30 seconds. So we'll take a look at that on top of the fact that uh, what I call smart money and big money, as we take a look at uh, Goldman Sachs shows that 45% of family offices who have a ton of uh, affluent or affluent investors. Now we also have uh, billion dollar investment firm Rothschild Investment Corp getting into Bitcoin. And there was a sum up uh, on the Alex Mascioli show where he takes a look at just this massive amount of big money uh, moving from the traditional market into cryptocurrency. And finally, we're going to take a look at uh, the Grayscale situation where Sunday's Grayscale Bitcoin shares unlock held more shares than the remaining events combined. So basically, if you live past Monday and that uh, big little dip, you're going to be okay. And then uh, finally, I just want to talk about how we did a, a deep dive into loop ring. And you can find that over on the Digital Asset News Clips channel. We'll talk about that at the very end. But first, let's take a look at what's going on into the market. So, hey, not a bad day. Had a little bit of a recovery, looking pretty good. And we're almost at 1.3 trillion right where we kind of started a couple of weeks ago. So that is uh, something to celebrate. And really what it comes down to is just that everybody was expecting some big fireworks from this discussion today. And and I can tell you, uh, we'll, we'll get into it in a second, but uh, it was, uh, some people will call it enlightening. I call it extremely boring. And uh, I'm, I'm glad everybody was there during the live stream. When we, when we, we live streamed over on uh, Digital Asset News Clips and that made it pretty much enjoyable. But a lot of things weren't as good as I would would expect. But anyhow, uh, Bitcoin right now is sitting around uh, 31,000, almost at 32,000. We were at, people were expecting so much that uh, the price of Bitcoin was up 10, 11%, and it's dipped down a little bit uh, below that, but here we are. Ethereum 1952, I believe it uh, crossed 2,000. Check me in the comments, but I think it did. Tether's Tether, and uh, just a couple of people care, apparently. Binance Coin, 7% up, 7% uh, for Cardano, great, 6%. Dogecoin up 10%. Congratulations, Dogecoin holders and all that good stuff. Polygon is up 22%. And uh, before this discussion, it was up 30%. And pretty much everything across the board is up. So it's looking pretty good. I think that, uh, you know, this was one of those uh, events that people were expecting fireworks. And um, I mean, it did its job. It, uh, it didn't uh, launch anything into space, but it got us past a little bit of a hurdle. So let's just take a look at what happened today, as I call it, the car salesman discussion. And uh, like I said, we did a live stream. Uh, I will link this at the very end uh, in the uh, the very last piece where you can click uh, click on those different videos. And I got to tell you, thank you everybody who showed up uh, because if it wasn't for the comment section, I would have fell asleep. Now I know like there's going to be a ton of people, and you know they're going to have their their uh, opinions and their views, and that's fine. My opinion was uh, I was expecting a little bit more, and uh, we didn't get it. What we did get was that uh, Elon Musk did say that, hey, he still owns uh, a lot of Bitcoin, a lot more Bitcoin than he does uh, Ethereum and Dogecoin. He believes in Bitcoin. He believes even the layer two uh, solution. He believes in the store of value narrative. The one thing that uh, disappointed uh, was that uh, the whole thing about uh, renewable energy sources. And uh, he pretty much came out and said, look, he goes, the different studies that I've seen, you can't do that. You, There is no way that the renewable energy sources can power the Bitcoin network as we start to ramp up and have more of the hash power come through because of all the different miners that are going to be turning back on uh, their mining rigs as they move from China to Texas or wherever, right? So he said that was one of his things that he was concerned about still. And of course, uh, you can you are welcome to sound off in the discussion area or the comments about uh, you know his company and and uh, and green energy and everything else like that. But uh, Kathy Wood, who I got to tell you, Kathy Wood is right here in the middle, as I am looking on with uh, pure disgust. <laughs> Just kidding. And uh, Kathy Wood. I, I'm a new fan of Kathy Wood. She is the uh, CEO of ARK Investments. Uh, she has invested heavily uh, into Tesla. Uh, also, she is a cryptocurrency proponent. And uh, she uh, just, when she talks and when she talks about the things going on in the cryptocurrency and digital asset space, it makes a lot of sense. And when you listen to Elon, 
we know he's a genius, but man, as far as like being articulate, that is not his strong suit. And Jack Dorsey, another smart guy. And uh, I mean, he had a really a couple of a, a great points about about Bitcoin and 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 the um, the intricacies and the elegance of of what is going on as far as the the, the blockchain itself. He go, but uh, again, it just kind of fell a little bit short, and um, it was good. And the only thing that really made it great was pretty much Kathy Wood. So I'm gonna link that in the end uh, here. But as far as like things that we discovered, there was nothing really new. Jack talked about how they are going to be working more on hardware they're going to be making a bitcoin hardware wallet hopefully it's a lot easier than what we have right now and uh, godspeed to him hopefully it all works out so that was just uh, as i say the first part to uh, this little market recovery and the second one i want to talk to you about is smart money and big money and this was an article that uh, just came out today uh, goldman sachs survey shows 45 percent of family offices want to invest in crypto that's pretty good a recent Goldman Sachs survey of more than, there we go, 150 family offices around the globe shows that 45% of them are interested in investing in cryptocurrencies. 15% of survey participants already have exposure to the asset class. Those looking to get in are worried about a long lasting low interest rate environment and rising inflation. Last week, U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen forecasted several months of rapid inflation and uh, right there that should be a big cue for a lot of people to get into this space family offices if you don't know are private companies that are responsible for handling the riches of wealthy families so again they are smart money and big money all rolled together uh, with over 70 billion well at least big money i don't know about smart with over 70 billion in total assets under management microsoft co-founder bill gates casket investment is the largest investment company of this type. Nearly one fifth of those family offices that participate in the, in the uh, survey have more than 5 billion in assets under management. And so if you take a look at this and go, wow, well, 40% of them wanna get into it. And the reason is because they see the writing on the wall, just like what Janet Yellen's talking about. Look, we're gonna have a lot of inflation. We're either gonna have rapid inflation or we're gonna have stagflation, whichever one you wanna look at it, something bad is going to happen on the pipe. And there is a couple of ways to protect yourself. One of those is T-bills. Uh, and you know you can de debate that all all you want to but uh, there was a rapid increase of people getting into t-bills as they get out of the s p 500 and then and traditional equities and then you have another market called crypto and digital assets so why not just hedge your bet split your bet and go there now of course on this channel investment opinion not investment advice but it makes sense to me so let me know what you think about that piece in the comment section and let's continue on with some more smart money as rothschild yeah those guys uh, investment corp is accelerating exposure to bitcoin what's going on here according to new records rothschild investment corp is pushing hard with bitcoin involvement having quadrupled let me say that again having quadrupled that's 4x its exposure to the digital assets since april a number of major companies are continuing to buy while most people are selling and that's the big thing when we talk about the smart money and the long-term investor and the people who just get a little bit scared you can kind of see like like which ones they are it's like the long-term investor and and the smart money they don't really care about the day-to-day -day operation the week to week the month to month they're really just looking down the road and that could be six months that could be 60 years in all honesty but they don't really care so much about what's going on in the near term it's all medium and long-term type of thinking and that's really where all the riches are made look uh, for me, I started out just like a lot of people. I just wanted to get rich quick. I'll be honest with you. Like I, I saw cryptocurrency. I'm like, it's going to go to the moon. It's going to go the moon. And then I realized I'm like, as fast as this is, it's the fastest thing really out there, right? But I have to be more disciplined and I have to take my lumps and I have to just plan for the future. And that's why I'm always talking about dollar cost averaging because it just works. So that's just one of those things. Let's uh, Let's jump back to this article where the investment firm has confirmed ownership, this is uh, Rothschild, of 141,405 shares of the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. I know right now you're probably going, ah, the Bitcoin Trust. I know, it's not really, it's, it's not Bitcoin. It's, if, it, if it starts with a G, BTC, that, that doesn't mean it's, it's, uh, it's your Bitcoin. It belongs to Grayscale. Uh, and this was in a filing with the U uh, United States SEC. Rothschild is a major player in the space, however, uh, having invested in the Grayscale Ethereum Trust as well. So this part right here, it states, per the filing, the company owned 38,000 plus Grayscale Bitcoin shares in April. 
each share is worth 0. 0.0009 Bitcoin, which is equivalent to 4 million. And I was like, 4 million, who cares? That's like, it's like a drop in the bucket to these, these billionaires. And then I, I, then the next sentence got me, it says, ARK Invest uh, also reported purchase of 310,000 grid point, uh, grayscale Bitcoin shares to take its holdings to 8 million. So look, <clears throat> Kathy Wood's a pretty big believer in it, and uh, they've got eight million. And uh, you know, Rothschild is just halfway behind him. So could that potentially increase? Yes, and especially with the story that we just took a look at, where you know these family offices are also looking to get into it. It's not about just one huge entity. It's just taking bits and pieces from people and and groups and institutions all around the space to invest into into our space and get them here. So uh, I don't have to have you know um, these multi multi billions or trillions BlackRock to, to to put all their you know eight trillion into Bitcoin. I just need percentages. That's really all it is. Comes down to it's a game of inches. And then lastly, uh, grayscale now has the attention of crypto space after unlocking 16,000 Bitcoin worth of Grayscale shares on Sunday. There were concerns that the move would force the coin's value down, and they seem to be given credence by sharp moves, and we saw that as well. And just remember, in spite of that, Grayscale Bitcoin investors aren't allowed to redeem shares for Bitcoin, and they sell for fiat, so Bitcoin markets aren't in the picture. So just remember, uh, when people are selling their uh, grayscale shares, it's just paper. They're just selling paper. They're not selling any Bitcoin whatsoever. And then uh, this was also telling. Uh, grayscale CEO Michael Sunshine pointed out that businesses are not bothered with short-term movements. Businesses and the long-term investor. Investors in this asset class are not focused on short-term movements in price. These are really investors looking at their allocations in the medium to long-term, just like what I said. And so any volatility or dampening of volatility is not something anyone is phased by. So look, that was just two examples of big money and smart money. But there was this point on the Alex Maschioli show, and he summed it up perfectly. When you listen to this, just think to yourself, man, uh, is there... Is there any doubt that we could be seeing some major fireworks in quarter, 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 four, quarter four of this year, quarter one or quarter two of next year? Because just listen to all the money that is getting in real quick. Check this out. Um, for sending these over, but look at this. FTX, $900 million in, in uh, funding at a round valuation of 18 billion. OpenSea, where we NFT'd Ryan's hair, or are going to at least, 100 million in Series B round at one and a half billion dollar valuation. Titan, 58 million in a Series B led by uh, Andreessen's uh, Harwitz's A16Z. Look at that. 192 million for two funds with a crypto focus. DeFi derivatives protocol Vega, 43 million in a token sale. Tell me where tell me where the lack of of institutional investing is because yeah, I don't know, because it seems like uh, we're just seeing a ton of those. And then also, don't forget that uh, the uh, former head of the New York Stock Exchange is going to be head of the new cryptocurrency exchange called Bullish, which is where they're going to combine the best parts of DeFi. So you can have uh, liquidity providers provide cryptocurrency and get yield right off of that. So when you think about it, um, gosh, uh, what's going to happen in the future? I have no idea. I have no, I can't, I don't have a crystal ball, but I can tell you it looks pretty positive. And uh, speaking of positivity, that leads me to one of my last points when we talk about Grayscale. Now, this was an article. It says Sunday's Grayscale Unlock held more shares than the remaining events combined. And I can sum it up in this one sentence. Bitcoin holders now have a silver lining. Unlockings are only scheduled until August 25th. So you're like, ah, crud, I got another month ago. And the outstanding shares are fewer in number than Sunday's tranche or just that, uh, that huge piece where everything just dipped down. But just I'm going to blow this up. So look at this real quick. Look at look at this. So all this time from April, especially May, when everything started to plummet, look at all the unlock schedules. Bah, 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 bah. And then, of course, in around 20th to 21st, this is when we had 
the big spike, that big spike right there. And now everything's just falling off. Now there's a couple of little minor spikes here in August, but in September, October, November, smooth sailing, my friends. So that's, that's it. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. So again, uh, all these stories that are, that are coming about as far as the FUD stories and things like that, I think we're in a pretty good place. And I think we're going to see, like I said, some fireworks uh, coming up soon. I don't know if August is going to be the month or September, but I got a pretty good feeling. And uh, I don't see anything uh, getting in our way uh, unless some kind of a black swan of that. But who knows? But uh, pretty positive news. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section. And let's uh, move on to our very last piece. And I'll make this uh, real quick, which is we did a deep dive on uh, loop ring. And I was able to use Loop Ring and uh, uh, use it just like how it's supposed to be a decentralized exchange. They, they use ZK rollups. It's a, a Ethereum layer two solution and uh, it's super fast. And usually the gas fees are anywhere around like 10 bucks now, uh, 10 bucks, 12 bucks, something like that. But when I used it, the fee was uh, 12 cents. So if that interests you, then check that out. I will link that at the very end. And uh, that essentially is it. So look, if you if you like the video, uh, first of all, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for hanging with me. I appreciate it. Uh, if you like these types of videos, subscribe. A lot of things we talk about here are just the news. Over at Digital Asset News Clips, we do those things where we take a look at uh, Loop Ring, we take a look at World Mobile Token, take a look at Meld, uh, Charlie, all those big projects, and we do live streams over there. So definitely check out that channel. Link is in the description. But that is it. So thanks so much for sticking with me. I'll see you on the next one.